Thank you to the people that run the conference, because as um, he just mentioned, when they were planning and trying to get me here to speak, I'd uh, literally just um, finished opening the show, and so I wasn't very responsive on emails. But, um, but thanks so much for their patience, because it means I can be here today to talk to you about a lot of the work that I've been undertaking over the past sort of three and a half years. So. on those ideas of statistics and numbers that they don't have the ability to get to the heart of what makes video games so unique and fascinating as a design discipline. And so very early in the stages of curating the show, I was trying to dig out a quote or something that just sort of helped identify or helped sort of galvanize what it is that is so fascinating about video games, what is so unique about them as an art form. And I came to this quote from a talk by Frank Lance, director of NYU Game Center. And I've said this quote a lot over the past few years. It says, um, making games combines everything that's hard about building a bridge and everything that's hard about composing an opera. Games are operas made out of bridges. And this is a very bombastic statement. It's a very confident statement about the potential of video games. Here we are sort of equating video games to operas and to sort of these huge feats of engineering. But what is so great about this quote is that it breaks the medium down to sort of its sort of essential or sort of lets us look at it at its sort of very foundations. And what we see in this statement is the intent of video games as being a discipline where that sort of subjective, emotional and aesthetic design meets that sort of objective system design and engineering. This is where art meets technology. And that's really what we've striven to or strove to do with the work of the exhibition is how do we help sort of illuminate both this sort of duality and the tension that exists between those two halves? So the thesis for the exhibition is one where we, um, this is by no means the first major exhibition on video games by a major cultural institution, 
But um, what we did want to do with this show, and what I really, um, the ambition shared by myself and the museum was to do something radically different to what had gone before. I think a lot of what we see sort of in major institutions engaging with video games previously was a, a tend to focus on sort of retro histories of nostalgia, and actually quite a limited sort of retro history, quite a Western history, quite a male dominated history. Um, but the decision that we chose to make with this exhibition was to not look to the past, but to look to the now, and to look to the contemporary. And the specific period the exhibition looks at is from the mid-2000s to the present day. And the reason why we're looking at that specific period is in the mid-2000s, we have a whole host of technological catalysts from smartphones to broadband to social media, all of which has had a radical impact on the way that games are designed, the way that they're discussed, and the way that they're played. But the other thing that we wanted to do with this exhibition was, again, sort of push back against this notion that the only way to engage with a video game in an exhibition space was to have sort of a work there and to be playable. And there's a lot of sort of reasons why actually just exhibiting a video game as a playable work in a public setting is actually quite complex and quite, um, quite difficult for, for sort of for something to do in a public space. So these are works that aren't normally designed to be in sort of played in public spaces. They're works which sometimes can take 30 hours for you to sort of really engage or understand that as a design object. So what other approaches are there for exhibiting video games? And I'm very fortunate to be based in a department at the museum, which is one which engages with, uh, which is the design, architecture, and digital department. And within that title, we have architecture. And there was a comment that one of our architect cura uh, curators said a few years ago, which has really stayed with me. And there's very specific reasons why it's complicated to exhibit architecture, because you can't necessarily exhibit buildings within buildings. But he said, um, he said, we don't really collect architecture, we don't really curate architecture, we collect the debris. And he meant that not in a sort of negative way, but he was talking about it in this sense of the fact that they look for this constellation of objects, they look for other objects that can speak or illuminate architecture as a design practice, that sort of help present that and exhibit that um, in public spaces. So the exhibition, as I say, is one which sort of, uh, we're, we're looking at that mid-2000s to the present day, and as such, the exhibition actually breaks down into three key sections into, um, you've actually got the old titles on this, because this is one of the uh, designs from our architects, but it's three key sections. The first is new designers, where we look at design in detail. The second is disruptors, where we're looking at the critical and political conversations being had about video games. And the last is looking at the work of players. But because I've got eight minutes left on the clock, what I made the decision to do today was actually just to focus on one of those sections, which is the new designers section of the exhibition. And so this is a space that sort of perhaps reflects a little bit more sort of that traditional approach to um, ex exhibitions at the V&A. And sort of it's a, it's, a, it's a section of the exhibition which is sort of reflecting on the way that perhaps we approach architecture, we approach other design disciplines that I think for the mass majority of people, and even people who play video games, even people who are literate in video game design, that the process of how to make a video game and understanding the, the design discipline can be very much like a black box, sort of almost impenetrable, that we very much see these sort of finished products, but we don't often talk about sort of what happens sort of in between or in that process, which was why it's really amazing to see, say, Victor's work this morning sort of touching on the concept art and sort of that narrative and world building a grey box level design. And so that was really the ambition of this space. And this section in the exhibition is one where we've focused on eight key contemporary games. By no means is this a um, canon of every game that is important or interesting from the past uh, 15 years, but instead we try to find an eclectic and diverse range of games that helped illuminate sort of a different modes of creativity and different modes of um, creation and different ambitions within video games. And so one of the first titles that visitors come to in the exhibition is the 2012 video game Journey. This is a game by that game company and it is one where the designers had the ambition to create a game that created a new emotional feeling that they didn't think was necessarily represented within video games at the time, which is one of awe and love and empathy. And it's a game where you play sort of as these robed figures online traversing this desert landscape. And during this time, you, you sort of meet other players who uh, you play and sort of collaborate with anonymously. And it's a game that was sort of digitally distributed. It's a game that was created by an independent studio. So I think of all the works in this section, like this is one that really encapsulates sort of the optimism and ambition of and the potential of independent game design. 
And so, um, whoop, there we go. So, so what sort of objects did we look to for this? And there was a really amazing talk that Genova Chen, who was the um, one of the sort of leaders of the uh, design team of Journey, um, did at GDC a few years ago, where he began to break down this process of what went into making Journey. And it was a really critical moment in the curation of the exhibition. And through that, it helped begin to lay down the framework of what sort of objects, what sort of materials can we bring together. And one, this object that you can see in front of you is the uh, production notebooks of Robin Hunnicky, who was one of the producers on the game. And when we think about video games as design, when we're trying to talk to, the, talk to people about video games as design, I really love the fact that no matter which designers I spoke to or who I sort of um, engaged with, the thing that sort of kept coming back was just the notebook, which is just such a simple and obvious tool of design that I think any does any any person who is a designer in any design discipline that sort of just relates to this as a tool. And there was something really great about being able to bring together different notebooks. And some of my favourite notebooks in the exhibition are those by Aurea Harvey from uh, the design, uh, or by the artist Tale of Tales, who'll be speaking later this evening. So if you get a chance, um, I please recommend recommend when you come to the exhibition to take some time and uh, to peruse her notebooks. But moving on from the notebook as well to the concept art, and so some of this obviously sort of digital in nature. Video games are an inherently sort of digitally born, sort of digitally native medium. And so here we have some of the artwork by the game's uh, uh, art director, Matt Never. On the right, you can see sort of a digital painting that is the white light of the mountain, which is sort of this end point or this sort of goal that you're journeying towards in a video game. Um, and actually, one of the things, it's not, this image he didn't create on a 3DS, but a lot of his um, original sort of artwork or digital artwork, he actually did did use sort of like a 3DS to sort of create that and would go out to the desert and all the, the sort of beaches in Pismo in, in uh, California to sort of sketch and sort of get an idea of the feel of being in those spaces. But we also have some of his sort of pencil sketches and his character designs of seeing not just the landscape or the environments, but how do the characters navigate through that space? What are their movements like? But what sort of that sort of represents perhaps sort of the art of sort of Lance's statement or that sort of the, the opera that Video games is very much also about the system design, about the engineering. And this is one of my favorite objects in the exhibition. And it's actually one of the early prototypes of Journey. And what's actually happening on screen here is these two blobs, as they're sort of um, moving together through this space, when they connect and sort of meet each other, you can see that they sort of turn white momentarily. And that gives them the ability to sort of surmount some obstacles and sometimes be able to move a little bit faster. And through this, they were the designers were just sort of iterating and testing. OK, we want to influence influence a certain mode of sort of collaborative behavior amongst players. We want people to want to come together and want to support each other. So how do we create mechanics and game design and sort of that engineering, that system design to encourage that? And so they create these prototypes, which when you look at when you look at Journey, it's such a beautifully sort of lavish and sort of visually stunning game. But I love the contrast of this prototype because it is so brutally ugly compared to that. But there's, it's a really lovely um, installation that we have at the VNA, which is actually you can hear the design team playing through these early prototypes and just sort of laughing and talking to each other and reflecting on this design. And so I think it really just sort of show that iteration or that different side of games design that we don't normally perhaps sort of talk about. Or we don't normally illuminate. But um, sort of coming, like one of the things that sort of surprised me a little bit, and I don't normally have this slide in the presentation, but it's an object which has resonated with quite a lot of people in the exhibition. And I think we're looking at video games um, through a contemporary lens. We're looking at it as digital design. And one of the things that we've sought to do with this exhibition was how do we make sure that we sort of reach out to and connect video games, not just with people who are literate or people who might be fans of QWorks, but with people perhaps who don't have familiarity in this medium, but are curious and interested to know more. And I talk about the notebook as being sort of this object that people can, can sort of connect and engage with. But there's perhaps no object or no design tool that perhaps anybody or that one that, that is better sort of helps connect people that people can relate to as much as the humble spreadsheet and especially a Google Docs spreadsheet and a shared Google Docs spreadsheet. And so this object is one of the first in the exhibition, which um, is from de the development of Journey, where they're plotting out the narrative or the emotional journey that they want players to go through. And it's really amazing to be in a space such as the VA to be able to say, actually, it is valid for us to be looking and rep representing and reflecting the sort of tools that contemporary designers are using, such as that um, as a Google Docs spreadsheet. And it's been really amazing to me how many narrative designers and people have come and reflected on this and are able to sort of see themselves um, in, a, in a spreadsheet. 
And so this is sort of an idea, this is sort of roughly how these objects are sort of laid out in the exhibition. So the show has sort of these constellations of different objects that sort of bring together or give you sort of an idea of the sort of design and the different sort of modes and different aspects of design that go into creating a game. By no means are these comprehensive uh, reflections on every aspect that goes into that game, but it's sort of a constellation that gives, helps gives people an impression or an idea or enables them to see it as a design object in a different way. And so accompanying these sort of constellations of design, another thing that we created in collaboration with our architects, our exhibition architects and our exhibition AV designers, was to come up with a series of large scale installations and interactives. And the ambition for these was to provide some sort of visual interpretation that allows people to view those works from a slightly different perspective, from a slightly different angle that I think perhaps you don't get from playing a game. And it's something that you have to come into a physical space to experience. And so this is the inspiration for the installation that we actually created for Journey. And it's, again, you, it, this very much reflects sort of the graph that you saw in that spreadsheet, that this is the narrative progression of each of the different levels that are present within Journey. And that then translated to the installation that we created, which is this sort of large scale video progression where you see a cross section of every single level in that in the in the ex, in the video game. And again, it gives video it gives sort of visitors to the exhibition the ability to reflect on this, the ability to then reflect on that spreadsheet and to be able to see the connections, those objects coming together, and hopefully give people an idea about what goes into um, what went into the design process and ambitions of Journey. But, but so that that's really sort of a whistle stop tour of just one game and a few objects from the first section of the exhibition. As I say, it's just one third of the show. It doesn't touch upon the other two sections, such as disruptors, where we're looking at the critical conversations, which is a sort of contemporary reading room, where we want to illuminate sort of the critical conversations and political conversations that many advocates, designers, and thinkers are having in video games, which really touch on sort of some incredibly pressing contemporary issues. Um, it doesn't talk about sort of the sort of last two sections of the exhibition, where we look at players, both sort of mass online player communities who are people who fr frequently transcend the role of designers or equally the work of sort of the DIY niche offline sort of hacker maker creators who are creating these sort of rebellious arcades but those are all talks that we'll um, have to wait for another day but um, thank you so much for um, for listening to this talk and I hope that as I say if some of you are in London you get a chance to come to the exhibition and I hope equally um, if people out there are interested in engaging with games culturally that this exhibition helps sort of provide sort of an insight into the different ways that we can sort of engage engage and um, look at exhibiting video games and essentially sort of forge a path towards a new sort of language for video games culturally. Thank you.